Hello and welcome back to your daily dose of .NET. In today's episode, we will complete this series, where we're building a calculator app using .NET MAUI. Before we start, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you like this content and would love to see more videos on .NET related topics. So let's get started. In the last two videos, we created the UI of our calculator app in XAML. We'll now add some final tweaks to the UI and wire up the logic of our application using the MVVM architecture. So if we compare our current UI to our reference, we'll see that we're missing the toolbar at the top, which has some secondary toolbar menu items. We won't be implementing the functionality for any of the menu items, but we can add them to our app just for visual purposes. So we'll add a content page dot toolbar items at the top and define multiple toolbar items inside with their order set to secondary, so they don't show up directly on the app bar, but in the overflow menu. Now, if we run our app, we should see that we now have the toolbar at the top, but we need to tweak the colors. We can do this by setting the shell.background color and shell.foreground color properties in our content page. And finally, we can add a padding of 12 to our buttons grid. With our UI looking good, we can now turn our attention to implementing the calculator functionality using the MVVM pattern. If you're not familiar with the MVVM pattern, you can check out this excellent video by James Montemagno, where he explains what MVVM is and why it's a popular architectural pattern for building apps with XAML. We're going to be using the community toolkit.mvvm new git package, which is going to make our lives much easier as you'll see. So we'll install the new git package for our project. Next, we'll create a new class in the root of our project and call it main page view model. Ideally, when using the MVVM pattern, we should have different folders for our views and view models, but we're just going to do this quick and dirty for demo purposes. So we'll make our class public and switch to a file scope namespace. Next, we'll inherit from observable object, which comes from the community toolkit NuGet package we just installed, and we'll add the using statement for that at the top. Also, we'll need to make the class partial so it can work with the source generators. Now that we've done that, we can begin adding our properties and binding to them from our UI. First, we'll add private string fields for the calculator display, which we'll call expression display and result display. Now for MVVM, we should also have public properties with getters and setters where we can invoke the property changed event, right? Well, since this is an observable object, we can simply add an observable property decorator atop each of our private fields and the source generators from the MVVM package will take care of everything else. Pretty cool, right? We can now head back to our main page.xaml file and begin binding to the properties in our view model. First though, we'll need to tell our view about our view model. A simple way to do this is in the code behind for the main page view. So in the main page.xaml.cs file, we can change our constructor to accept a main page view model instance and then assign that instance to the binding context property. For this to work, however, we'll need to set up dependency injection for our view and view model. So in the mauprogram.cs file, we'll add builder.services.add transient calls for the main page and the main page view model classes. Now, in our main page.xaml file, we can set the text property of the calculator display entry to bind to the expression display property in our view model and set the text property of the label to bind to the result display property as well. To test our bindings, we'll set the properties in our main page view model's constructor to some sample values. Running the app, we can see that the values from our view model are reflected in the UI. Finally, we can add a method to our main page view model to handle when the calculator buttons are pressed. This method will take in a string, which we'll call button text, which we'll use to determine which button was pressed. We can easily convert this to a command by adding the relay command decorator from the community toolkit package. Then, in our main page.xaml file, we can bind the command property in our base calculator button style to the handle button press command, which is generated for us automatically by the community toolkit package. We can also bind the command parameter property to the text property of the button that was clicked on. Now, we can add some simple code in the handle button pressed method to run the calculations using the datatable.compute method and display the result on the UI. If we now run the application, we can see that it mostly works, except for some edge cases. If you've enjoyed this short series, please leave your thoughts and suggestions in the comments below and check out other videos on the channel. Thanks for watching your daily dose of .NET, and I'll see you in the next one.